Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Sunless Skies. I have a little bit of a problem that was pointed out to me in the comments by my lovely, lovely viewers. When I purchased the hidden, well what I thought was a hidden compartment, it was actually just a cargo expansion. <laughs> Not hidden cargo, just normal cargo. So I basically blew all of my money on something I didn't actually need. So maybe we won't be doing smuggling anytime soon so that probably means that i am more than likely going to just be trying to get some more money this episode and it's going to be another one of those weird ones where i just float around doing nothing my volume was too loud oh man i made the mistake of eating a pizza before recording this i was hungry and okay so i need 450 technically i have enough but that wouldn't give me enough to buy any of the literature. There we go. Or it might. No, I can't do maths. So yeah, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna do a prospect. Uh, why do we get panes of stained glass? Do I have any? I don't think I do. Let's, let's go back to London and see if we can pick up a prospect that will help us make some money. We may even manage to explore a little bit more of Albion while we're at it. I'm kind of concerned about the sheer amount of food and fuel that our ship is consuming right now on that train. It's a little bit terrifying. Was it the first one or was it the second one? I have a feeling it was the second one. Damn it. It was. Crap. I will warn you now, this is the day where I got up at 5 o'clock in the morning. This is going to be bad. <laughs> Rough and ready, maybe. Uh, I need to talk about. Well, I suppose I'll, 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 I'll mention things after I've gone to London and had a look at the things that we can do so I can waffle while we drive as opposed to uh, wasting too much time. So, what prospects we got? So I find out I've got none. Astronomical opportunity hours for the Royal Society. The astronomers at Nell's Tower are struggling, are struggling to keep up with their increased workload. The Ministry has them at their great telescope every hour of the day. More time would be greatly appreciated. Three barrels of unseasoned hours. The Royal Society lies to the east southeast of London. I do have a lot of those. Look at the size of my hold. It's huge. Uh. So yeah, let's accept that one. Enough tea to fuel the sun. They want more tea at the, the sun, so maybe we should get that one as well. Uh, what did they want? Oh, you're not looking. Three. We have three? Of course we do. Okay, so now we need to buy ourselves some more fuel. And supplies. One more fuel for good luck. There we go. So, we can either go to the sun, which is over here, or we can try and find the Royal Society. Wow, it was right there. Um, east, south, east. East, south, east. So we're going to like here ish. Let's go try and find that first, and then it will swing round to the Clockwork Sun if we can. Oh, they sell panes of stained glass. That makes perfect sense. I should have probably seen that a million times. But either way, let's go have a look, see if we can find the Royal Society. Because if we can manage to find the Royal Society, that's another place we haven't been. Well, haven't seen for a while. Anyway, I haven't been there for a very long time. It's the place with the racers, was it not? Uh, looking down, you can see all the strata of London banded below you. Hopefully we have enough fuel. Oh no, I can feel a sneeze coming. Uh, I don't think it's actually going to make me sneeze though, because that's how that works. What a massive pain in the ass. One of the things I can talk about. Oh, I have started a new series on my channel, and people who are subscribed to me probably already know it exists. But if you 
not subscribed to me, I've started playing Layers of Fear. Now, I know it's a game that every single YouTuber ever has played at some point, so it's a good chance you've seen it. But uh, if you fancy giving it a look, please feel free to go have a look. I, uh, I get scared quite a lot. And it's got a face cam in it, so you get to see my lovely, lovely face while I'm playing games. You get to see all the stupid expressions I pull while reading. Something that you don't see when I'm playing Sunless Skies, because uh, you don't need to see my face with this. You're meant to be concentrating on what's on the screen. It is very strange to be playing with a, uh, a, we a webcam pointed at me. It's not something I'm used to. I used to do it when I was streaming, but I haven't streamed for a while because of, uh, well, increased workload and various illnesses and things that have just made me feel generally crap over the years. Well, months, like years. I haven't been doing it that long. Uh, let's see. I'm not, I don't want to use the bat too much, or how. Not, because I'm not sure his range. I think he's got quite a short range on him. But I know that everything's in clumps, so I'm assuming we come across it, it should be like a big infrastructure like this. I hope. Okay, this seems this seems like a good place. Oh. The indignant owl found nothing. Oh. Damn. <laughs> well, that's that's really goddamn annoying. Um. Be really careful about how far out I go, because if I go too far, it's in theory it should be around here somewhere, surely. The sound is tuneless and mournful. This doesn't seem like a very good place to be put in a. Uh... In fact, this is incredibly spooky. Your crew eye the surrounding cliffs, a tumble of scree. Some brandy. I'm gonna regret that when I'm gonna have supplies, but that little scree rattles down them. What is the hell is a scree? Mm, we're gonna have to start eating the crew. It's the only way. Ah, yeah, it's a glass dreadnought. McFarlane's Glen. That's a friendly dreadnought. That's a strange thing to be finding around here. Maybe I'm getting lucky and I'm flying close to the uh, Royal Society and I just don't know it. Oh, this is a biome change, isn't it? The inconvenient arm preens the Royal Society. I have a standing invitation of the Rochester, Rochester Club. Ah! Don't crash into the giant whirly gig. No, we're good. Hey, we found it. Wonderful. Remember correctly, I really like this place. I wonder where they put the... Um, what was it called? The Mausoleum. That was an interesting place. Pretty mansions of stone and glass rise above the verdant gardens. While below, machines whir and groan. A persistent sound of hammering pounds through the air. Well, first thing we're going to do is drop off the prospect here. Get a fair old bit of coin. The astronomers at Nils Tower are struggling, blah blah blah, read that bit. The super salicious bursa takes your delivery with unfeigned delight thank you thank you i have a loom spin these i have the loom spin these forthwith so we gained five strength of the sun and oh more guns yes am i actually carrying around am i seriously carrying around that much of that oh my god why am i walking around? i should have put those in the damn Idios. Uh, a dishevelled research associate sells caddies of dried tea from an oak chest. Due to an unfortunate but entirely understandable administrative error, the professor's entire research budget, budget has been spent on tea, she explains, shoving her feet awkwardly. Please buy some. 
I'd love to, but let's not just yet. Let's have a look around. The Royal Society. The Celestial Exhibition. To the delight of mostly himself, the Maleficus. Oh god. Mellifluous President is planning an expedition in the Royal Society. Uh, its theme will be the science of the skies. He's happy to pay visiting captains for items of interest they might come across. Uh, this doesn't seem worth it. No, sorry friend. It might be worth it if you donate so many and it unlocks the next level, but or like the next reward, somehow I don't think so. So let's have a look at the Royal Society. The Verd Nullus in Verba are written across the stonework above a great bronzewood doors. Her renewed majesty has granted these grounds to the finest minds in Albion to work here. Their purview is to invent, to hypothize, hypotheses, hypothize? There, yeah, to discover, and most crucially, to watch the stars. I am, my reading ability is destroyed today for some reason. My eyes <laughs> are falling out of my head. Introduce yourself at the Airy House. The Royal Society welcomes careful captains. The President greets you. He directs your attention to the new marble on the floors, to the cheerful portraits of distinguished Royal Society members lining the hallway, and finally to the very large portrait of himself in his plush library. We do like captains here at the Royal S. We need our space, and frankly our comforts to think. But it is you brave souls who do the real legwork, extremely educational. If not, our gardens are extremely fine, as is our conversation, and the port. Hmm. Apparently we can, uh... Wander the gardens, this seems like a terrible idea. Can we try? 34% chance. Failed. Damn. Again, Terra, goddammit. The gardens were an early attempt by the society to stamp their mark upon the sky. More interesting avenues for scientific exploration quickly presented themselves, however, and the gardens were left to run wild, half-tamed. The overgrown gardens are beautiful, but hazardous to the casual walker. You navigate the ha-ha with admirable electricity. The bronzewood maze is surmountable with the aid of a string. You are bedeviled by the little gnomes that poke out of the reeds in the marsh. It is hours before someone comes to rescue you. Hmm. Bugger. Let's write a port report. The Royal Society hums with activity. The preparations for the new wing of the airy house are in motion. The President is convincing another committee to continue the renovations of the gardens. The astronomers are excited about a star of burnished amber seen far to the east. The Rochester Club, regrettably, continues at high speeds. Hmm. We can't attend the society reception, so let's go to Nell's Tower. The Royal Society's observatory is named for King Charles's canniest mistress. Nell's Tower is the jewel in the society's crown. A sign on the door in neat copperplate reads Nell's Tower closed for the 13th annual Airy Diner. Or dinner. There is a polite cough at your shoulder. Turning, you see a tall man with a beard like a nest of vipers. The bursar introduces himself. I came to round up stragglers, but as a captain, you are of rank sufficient to attend the dinner if you wish to attend. There will be port, Captain. The dinner is held in the mahogany and marble imperial dining room of the airy house. Every piece of the dinner service is mismatched, and both the furniture and the personages in the room are pleasantly rumpled. The bursar brings you to the high table, where the three senior astronomers of Nell's Tower are holding court. You are introduced to the senatorial professor, and chair for the effulgent sciences and the lecturer for imperial affairs as the first course is served. 
So we have three choices here. We can dine on the game pie. It is ample and succulent. It is fresh, lightly roasted. That'll give us supplies, which we kind of need. We can guzzle the port. That will reduce our terror. Or we can eavesdrop on the conversation. I think reducing our terror is important. So let's just uh, drown our sorrows here a little bit. Good Lord. It smoked like fine cheese and fired like a master potter's kiln. The colour is pale ruby, like a star-kissed stone. Its bouquet is homeric, as are the epithets you lavish upon it. The senatorial professor smiles and adjusts his blindfold. From the ruins of Port Avon, a marvellous find. The first course ends with a great smacking of lips and a general feeling of goodwill towards the chef. I swear, this place has words that I've never seen before. Just saying. I swear I've read all through, through this before, but there you go. The conversation continues, lubricated by Herculean quantities of port. Buttered potatoes, roast squirmings, and sautéed Hybrian mushrooms are devoured in between rhetorical thrusts. Rhetorical thrusts. Hmm. We can talk to the lecturer in Imperial Affairs. She is rationing her port with water and visibly holding her tongue. We can talk to the chair of the effulgent scientists. Her eyes are wild. She has savaged the potatoes. Her conversation rambles, and her language is poetry. Or we can talk to the senatorial professor. He affords sly smiles from under his blindfold. Between circlings of mushrooms, he appears to enjoy playing the devil's advocate. Then we'll talk to the uh, lecturer in imperial affairs. The lecturer keeps her voice low and produces a pen from her iron bun. She scribbles on her napkin as you explain your recent history. They resent me here, you understand. I was a, a direct appointment by Her Majesty's government. They dislike being reminded who holds the purse strings. The second course ends with the lecturer in Imperial Affairs telling a rather ribald joke and a heartly toast to the continued health of all present. Sherbet's produced in London's sweet shops, sponge cake from the Admiral Nelson on Port Prosper, clotted cream and actual strawberries grown in the gardens. More port. The conversation grows looser, the stories more risque. The super salicious bursa leans in conspiratorially. I arrange these dinners to promote unity, you understand. And of course, for the good memory of our previous president, who nobly argued for the introduction of the society to the wilderness and convinced Her Majesty of our utility. He toasts the large portrait of Airy that dominates the room. We continue to talk to the lecturer of Imperial Affairs, or shall we try something else? Hmm. Let's talk to the effulgent scientists. She is drawing something on the napkin. Those limbs? Rays? She smiles widely. Something I saw. Last time I was permitted to use our great scope. Honestly, what's the point if we have to ask permission every time we move it? Did Isaac Newton need King Charlie's permission to discover gravity? The third course comes to a close with a great groaning and heartfelt but false protestations that one couldn't possibly manage cheese and biscuits after all of this. The super salicious bursa leans in as the plates are cleared away. Before we adjourn, there is the question of patronage to consider. All eyes are on you. A hush falls over the table. The three faces of the astronomers are turned to you. The super salicious bursa continues as though nothing has changed. Our telescope is operated only by the will of the government. We are not allowed to move the telescope without permission. A bold skyfarer such as yourself might attain such permission, or at least an official looking document that could be conceivably constructed as permission. Construed. Sorry, not constructed. <laughs> Our astronomers would be very much interested in patronizing you. You bring them a permit, they can advance their researches. In exchange, they'll teach you what they know. Hmm, okay, who do we want? So we've got the iron haired astronomer, London's own appointment. Will be your patron. 
Or we can choose the Chair for Refugent Scientists, the Wild-Eyed Astronomer, specialising in the habits of the stars. Or we can have the Senatorial Professor, the Blindfolded Cantankerous Astronomer of Old London, will be your patron. I think I'm going to go with the Lecturer of Empyrean Affairs. She smiles with something approaching genuine pleasure. Marvellous. Quite marvellous. Come to the tower whenever you wish to begin. Make sure you have a permit, mind. I think I have a permit. Hmm. Here, astronomers turn the vast steel telescope to the heavens and report the movement of the stars. Can we observe the clockwork sun? London authorises and encourages the use of this telescope. The Ministry has stamped permits for this particular usage up to the next century, the bursa informs you. Ooh, one tower. The sun's light is thin and nauseous, flecking on the horizon with a poisonous white gold light. Looking closer, you can see the machinery around the sun is still. Half lies in darkness, and the other in sad semi-twilight. Doesn't seem good. Mm. Let's... How many do we have? I think we have two. So let's give them one, see what happens. Deliver the lecturer in Imperial Affairs permission to move the telescope. You have paperwork from London that could plausibly justify continuing her researches into the skies of Albion. The ascent to this telescope is arduous and up an improbable number of winding stone stairs. At the top waits the telescope, gargantuan and gleaming as a dragon slumbering in its lair. The lecturer yanks the mechanism to raise the dome, which slowly and noisily opens to the skies. She bends and begins to fiddle with the machinery, lowering the lens to her eye. Here we can read our patron's latest reports. Over there, the bursa says through a mouthful of muffin. On the desk, for your perusal. Incandescent fire on the horizon. A warning? A welcome? Sometimes, I think they speak in sigils to confound us. Bolton has approved useless, as ever. Perhaps I shall make a pyre of his books and use the ashes to draw the correspondence in my notes. All this is to say, the heavens remain an enigma, searing, splendid, and sublime. Hmm. Okay, well we got two visions of the heavens, which isn't a complete waste. So uh, we can't do it for another 15 days apparently, so we'll go back to, uh, let's go visit the Rochester Club. A cosy country house bolted onto the side of the society's glass houses and overgrown lawns. This is the meeting place of the infamous Rochester Racing Club. Brandy glasses gleam on the shelves. Polished brass fixtures abound, a fire roars in the hearth. Members sit in comfortable armchairs comparing war stories. Parts salvaged from broken trains adorn the walls. So we can drop off the driver. Hmm. Pretty sure this is a way to get stuff. I've been I've talked about it before, I can't quite remember off the top of my head, but passively gains you things. So we can inquire into joining, or we compete in a race. Should we inquire into joining? The dismal debutante curls her lip. The boisterous Hardian cackles. The current Lord Rochester laughs gamely before abruptly stopping. Oh, you were serious? He coughs to conceal his embarrassment. Well, should you really wish to join our merry company, you'll have to prove yourself a proper racer. The careless Devilus in her smoked velvet jacket appraises you carefully. You'll need to prove your mettle, my dear. Win one of our races and we'll be happy to admit you. Oh, last time I did one of these races I just completely forgot about it and I was really, really, really late. We do it anyway. The thundering terror of sunless skies, the Rochester races are the competitive sport of choice to the Royal Society. Oh, so we have to go there and get back. Lord Rochester claps you on the back. Good sport, that. The rules are simple. Get to the destination port and back here in 30 days. Then you can call yourself a true Rochester racer. Savvy? He calls 
for order in the club room and gathers the other racers around. A quick toast is raised to your health and then it's on with the race. Uh, the floating parliament. Well, we have been there. It's not actually that far away. That also reminds me that when I uh, gained the quest for... Oh, the horologist? It did tell me where to go. I just wasn't paying attention. It's uh, Leadbeater and Stainwell's reservation. Somebody in the comments kindly told me. Thank you very much. I normally pay attention, honestly. Uh, so, we... Could try that. Someone remind me to do that. I'm running out of time in the episode, so I'm probably not going to have time to do it now. But let's go to the Portsmouth House. The workshops under the area are known collectively as Portsmouth House. The glass and brick factories are staffed by harassed inventors and engineers working constantly to produce the next advancement in adventuring equipment. The Portsmouth Arsenal. Smoke and soot. Glass and steel. Uh, the ring of hammers on metal. The swearing of engineers, the acrid scent of sweat. Here in the bowels of the Portsmouth House, the scientists of the Royal Society work to produce experimental designs for daring captains. A team of engineers led by the energetic mechanic are excited to get work on whatever you'll pay them for. You can convert goods to experimental modifications which can be exchanged for unique equipment. Ah, I remember this. This is where you can trade in guns. One can never have too many guns. Uh, okay, well, let's... What, what could you actually get here? I can't remember. Let's peruse the designs. Hmm. A secure chamber for your own private use. A Montessier chamber. Occupies your bridge slot, requires you to have at least 50 veils, and increases your hull by 4 and your quarters by 4. Hmm. Oh, I remember having the Rossetti cabins. Uh, crew containment. Defensive library system? Ha! <laughs> Quiet the mechanical Turk. This mechanical chess player is in fact a hoax. It contains a hidden space for a skilled player to sit comfortably within and operate it from within. That might have its own uses though. Oh, we get hidden compartments. The superior mining and smelting array? Hmm. Okay, so there is basically a lot of things that we can get here. And I probably have enough guns to get most of them, to be honest, if I tried. So we may have to have a look at that. I don't know if anyone recommends me getting something specific. Uh, if you do, please let me know. It'd be very, very useful. I saw an option here to ask her about a suit, because it seems very interesting. They clank about the arsenal in an old diving suit. It has pistons and chains that were when the mechanic needs reinforcement. It's clearly no longer used for deep Z diving. The energetic mechanic gives you a delighted smile. So glad you asked. Yes, I did repurpose it. Did all the work myself. It keeps me warm in the cold and cool when things are a little too warm. Closer examination reveals tiny sigils of fire and of ice scintillating across the diving suit's surface. For a moment, their tone is rueful. It costs me nearly everything to create. I wasn't sure it would be worth it, but the places I've been able to go, to see, I can travel the wastes where all the stars are dead, or explore the eye of a storm that speaks. That does seem very useful. But okay, so we can also trade tea here. Tea and... guns. Uh, should we have a look at the workshops? Here, the Society constructs specialist equipment to further the Society's explorations, London's armaments, and the occasional Sky Captain's adventures. Uh, talk to the engineers. Perhaps they're willing to furnish your locomotive with advanced equipment. They're going to take me to the, the engineers bit. Yeah. The senior engineer marches across the smoggy workshop floor to meet you. Well, she barks. Sorry, I, I mean hello. We're frightfully busy. We've examining the effects of vitrification on Mertrigoid's tea. We've just 
had a breakthrough. There is a gentle explosion behind her, followed by the tinkle of shattering glass. Sorry, must dash. Do visit the arsenal if you're looking for something special. God damn it. Uh, visit the inscribed tinkerer, the most famous or notorious engineer associated with the Royal Society. The inscribed tinkerer likes her workbench tidy and her tea as strong as the devil's opinions. She believes in iteration of technology, of society of people, and her inventions are intended to mitigate specific dangers and obstacles of the high wilderness. Her tea stained notebook bulges with blueprints and her skin is covered in inky treatments of the correspondence. She raises an eyebrow as you enter her office. Thank God, I was in need of a break. She can provide truly exceptional equipment from her shop if she likes you. If it's work you're after, Captain, I can be of assistance in that department. The inscribed tinkerer produces a slim notebook. The correspondence, Captain. The incandescent language. The Pentecostal tongues of the stars. She invites you to examine the broken sigils that score her skin, mirrored in her notebook. I've heard of a unique sigil I've not come across before. It's been cited by students in Traitor's Wood, by an old friend in the mausoleum, and by my least favourite person in Pan. As a captain, you could get to those places and confirm the sighting. I'd give you access to a few of my unique designs, should you wish to help. Hmm. Okay. Well, that does give me a reason to go to the Serene Mausoleum. That's for the other two places. My god. Well, either way, I think we'll have to end the episode here. We haven't really achieved much. But, um... Yeah, we've discovered the Royal Society. We'll, we'll do a few more things. But please, let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, I'll see you next time.